Are you wondering how you can set up a workflow to manage your inventory and then shipping within monday.com? Let me show you this workflow that will keep track of your inventory and then keep track on which items were sent out so you can have everything in one place. Hi, my name is Tara and I'm a certified monday.com partner and the founder of Simple Day. My goal is to help you build powerful yet simple workflows with monday.com. If you need help with a custom implementation, my contact details are in the description below. Let's jump into today's tutorial and make Monday the best part of your week. I wanna give a little bit of background into this use case so you understand why the boards were set up in the way that they were once I go through them. What we have here is there's a company that creates banners or things that other companies will need for a trade show. So they create banners, but they also create booths and anything else you may need for a trade show. Not only do they create them, but they store them in their warehouse. So they have all this inventory. Now this inventory doesn't belong to them. It belongs to their customers. So what happens is, is their customer will say to them, remember banner number, I don't know, one, two, three, four. I would like you to send this banner to us at this location or send it to this conference, send it to our office. And the company managing this would need to know where that banner was at all times. Was it out at a different conference or is it in their inventory? So they would need to to track when they send the banner out and they need to have tracking information and then they need to track when they get it in so then they know what items of the client they have in stock. So now that you understand that background, let me show you how this was set up. Okay, so now that you understand what the workflow is um, from the client's requests, let's jump into how the boards are set up. So there's two boards here. There's an inventory board and a shipping board. So we're going to start on the inventory board and you can see here, I have a list of all the inventory. This is essentially a description. It's divided by client. You can also make this a status column or a text column if you want. For this specific case, there's languages for each different banner. So it's divided by language. And then there's a style. This is a text column. So you can obviously add whatever information you want. Here we have stock status, and then we have an item ID column. What this is, it's a column called item ID, and a number is automatically added to a column when an item is created. So this number is automatically generated, and this is a unique number for this specific banner. In this example, we also have stock levels. Now, they only needed, they only had one of each item. So this workflow may not work if you have a lot more quantity and you don't have just one item, but I'm sure there's ways to build it out to incorporate different quantities. I also have a date added, and then these columns are connected board columns to the shipping board, and I'm gonna show you how they're used. Let's first jump into the shipping board. And you can see here we have a group for open items that need to be shipped things that need to be shipped and things that have shipped in the past. So basically what's going to happen, we're going to start on the inventory board and let's just say client number two calls me up and they say, I need banner number one. Maybe they'll give me the information banner number one. Maybe they'll give me the item ID and they'll say, I need it shipped to me. So what you're going to do is go here and change this to shipped. Now what's going to happen is the automation is going to create an item on the shipping board and automatically connect it here. If we go to the shipping board, you can see banner number one came in, the statuses need to be shipped. It has a date and it has a link to the inventory board where the status is still shipped. Now the shipping manager is going to come in. They're going to get everything that they need to get ready for shipping. They also can enter in the courier, the tracking, the tracking number and all the information. Here's also like a last update in a creation log. And then I can go here and when it's shipped, I'm going to change this to be shipped. Now what this does is it pushes this item to the shipped group. Okay. But we're still connected to the inventory board. If we go back to our inventory board, remember banner number one, it's now telling me that it's out of stock because it's been shipped out. Now, when they get the banner back in stock, the shipping department is going to change this to received. And that's going to push this item to the past shipped group. But it's also, see it just pushed it, but also as it does is it's going to clear this connection. So remember we had a connection to the shipping, it's no longer there. So it cleared that connection. 
and it's showing us that this item is in stock again. So essentially we're maintaining our stock here. We have all of the lists and then when things go in and out of stock and we'll mark it as in and out of stock. So that's the basic setup and the flow. Now let me show you how this actually works. If you go to your automations on the inventory board, so there's a number of automations that are here that you need to know about. The first is that when anything changes to in stock, we're going to st set the stock level to one because we're basically putting something back in stock. So we want to set it to one. This is when an item is created, set the date added to today, just so you can track the date. Now here, when status changes, um, we're going to change it from received, right? When the status is received, we're going to change the status on this board back to in stock. Now, this automation, these two automations are actually part of the templates if you go here and search them, because this column, the shipping status, is a mirror column. And the only way that we can pull the status from the mirror column to affect another column is through the templates. You have to look for the automation that says when one status changes, change another. There's another video on this that I've linked above that you can watch that video on how to set this specific automation up. Then the most important automation that we have here is when stock status changes to shipped, we're going to create an item in shipping. And if you open this up, you can see that I've mapped the information like the name, the date, the item ID. If you have any other information, you, you can. And then we're going to change the stock level to be zero because essentially we're saying, okay, it's been shipped. So now put it at zero. Now let's go to the shipping board. So the automation's there. So here you can see what we have. I'm actually going to start over here. We have an extra status column called connection. And I'm basically using this status column as like an action button to clear the connection when I need that to happen. So essentially I'm saying when the status changes to received, I want to clear this connection over here. So if you go to the automations, you can see over here, Basically, when shipping status changes to received, set connection to clear connection. And then when it changes, I'm going to clear the connection to the link for the inventory. Okay. I also, I'm going to move it to the past shipped group. And when status changes to shipped, I'm going to move it to the shipped group. So basically you have a whole flow here that starts with inventory. You can send it out from your shipping department and your inventory department will know when something is in stock or out of stock. And then when you get it back in, it shows up on your inventory board. So you have all of the items that are in stock. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and remember to subscribe to receive tips and tricks on how to use monday.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.